Hello everyone, this is Alex Ticchi on behalf of PCR Online. It is a great pleasure and a great honor of bringing you the latest news from the American College of Cardiology 2025 in Chicago. Dear friends, colleagues, and the PCR companions, we had the great honor today to welcome Professor Saibal Kar, a true legend in our field, one of the pioneers in interventional cardiology field. He has played a key role in developing several impactful devices, both in coronary field for drug diluting stents and in structural intervention. With, uh, among several uh, studies, uh, he played a key role for the contribution uh, for the mitral field with the mitral clip device and later on the tricuspid field. Today, we are talking of an important trial uh, of the tricuspid field that two years outcomes of the triluminate pivotal trial and it is important because the triluminate randomized 350 patients one-to-one to, -one to triclip for severe tricuspid regurgitation versus optimal medical therapy versus the control and we had that one year very interesting results because we have around 90 percent of reduction of the tricuspid regurgitation to moderate or less than moderate and around 5% in the control arm. And uh, the trial get reached is the primary endpoint uh, thanks to the significant difference in the quality of life uh, measured with the Kansas City uh, quality um, score. Unfortunately, the trial didn't show a significant difference in terms of mortality and hospitalization. And we have to say that numerically, the number of hospitalization was higher in the interventional group. So these two year results are very, very important, fundamental, I would say, because we have to understand if the results are durable and if they can be translated in an additional clinical benefit. So thanks so much, Saibal, for being with us today. So thank you very much, uh, Alex, for this very nice introduction. Yeah. So as you rightly mentioned, that the primary endpoint at a one-year follow-up did not show any difference in heart failure, hospitalizations, or mortality. However, there was an addition of more patients in the randomized arm, and there was a favorable trend of heart failure at one year seen at that time. What I'm going to show you today is the two-year follow-up of the 572 patients who were randomized. Of this arm, there were 285 patients who were randomized to device, 287 to control arm, and then after one year, they were allowed to cross over based on their symptoms and severity. In that respect, almost 60% crossed over after one year, and about 30-40% did not cross over. So we had two pre-specified endpoints. Number one was recurrent heart failure hospitalizations through 24 months and freedom from all-cause mortality, tricuspid surgery, and tricuspid valve interventions through two years. We also report in this study some of the other adverse events, TR grade and health status. And what we found is that when it comes to tricuspid regurgitation, at two years, it's still 84% moderate or less in the device arm. In the control arm, by intention to treat, this around 55% becomes moderate TRLS, and that is because that it included the patients who had crossed over. The most important, of course, endpoint was the pre-specified endpoint, second endpoint, of heart failure hospitalizations. The annualized heart failure hospitalization rate as measures at event for patient year was 0.26 in the control arm at 24 months. And then with the device arm, it is 0.19 events per patient year. So for the first time, we now have a statistically significant difference in heart failure admissions in the triclip versus the medical arm. And on a one-sided testing, it was 0 0.02. But even if you do a two-sided 95% confidence interval, it ranges between 0.53 to 0.9, which is also statistically significant. 
we do think that because there was a 60% crossover, the, the effect or benefit in heart failure administration was attenuated. If the patients did not cross over, the separation of curves would be even more greater. The second, of course, is the pre-specified endpoint of freedom of all-cause mortality, tricuspid surgery and tricuspid intervention. As expected, that the freedom for any of these was 77% in the device arm and only 22% in the control arm. And it was primarily driven by redo tricuspid interventions. There was similar tricuspid surgery in both the groups and there was no difference in all-cause mortality. So bottom line, we, we met both the pre-specified endpoints, reduction in annualized heart failure hospitalization to 24 months P.02, and a higher freedom from all-cause mortality, tricuspid surgery, and tricuspid intervention at 24 months. The safety events were very low in the crossover analysis. So we tried to look at more detailed into the crossover analysis. And what we found that 59% of the patients crossed over prior to the two-year follow-up. In fact, 92% of them actually occurred between one year and 18 months. There are seven characteristics of the group. The patients who crossed over were more symptomatic. They had a higher prevalence of torrential tricuspid regurgitation and they had more heart failure hospitalizations prior to crossover. Also, there was an increase in the dose of diuretics in those patients. So basically, they were a sicker group of patients. And we found out that when the safety of the procedure, there was no difference in safety of the index device procedure or the tier in patients who crossed over. And this SLDA rate was 5.6 to 5.7. There was no device thrombosis. There was no device embolization. And most patients were discharged home by one day. When it comes to the tricuspid regurgitation group, um, as I expected, expect, told you, the crossover arm of 81% became moderate or less by two years because they crossed over. For the pure control patients, which is only 44 patients, 21% of patients became moderate by two years. In other words, this is a group of patients who actually responded to medical treatment. So we'd like to look at the health status. So what we found out is the KCCQ12 had improved dramatically in the patients who received the tricuspid clip, and it persisted till two years. In addition, to reduction of TR. In the control group, the control group which crossed over, at one year there was minimal improvement of cases Q12, but after they crossed over, there was a significant increase in their cases Q12 scores. For the pure control arm, which is a smaller number of patients, they had a moderate improvement of cases Q12 at one year and two years. And this is consistent with the hypothesis that TR reduction leads to cases Q12 improvement. So there is a small group of patients who do well in medical treatment and don't need any other therapy, and this is just proof of that. So we summarized that at two years, the, the treatment with triclip reduced heart failure hospitalizations compared to medical therapy, despite the crossovers in the control arm. And we feel that if the crossovers did not take place and crossed over at two years, this difference would be even more significant. The improvements in TR severity and quality of life were sustained in the device patients through two years, and the triclip therapy is safe through two years and even on those who crossed over. The control patients whose symptoms and health status had worsened prior to crossover benefited from the triclip device with improvements in TR and improvements of quality of life. Thank you very much. I'm open to questions. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. They are terrific results. I think uh, that uh, there is a lot, uh, a lot to think, uh, and uh, this is also a base uh, for new studies because we need to tailor the therapy 
uh, really, really uh, properly for our patients. This means that uh, Triclip is not only safe and as effective at two years, but uh, uh, could change the life of our patients. Uh, and for the establishment, a hard endpoint of heart failure hospitalizations, which was, as you exactly. mentioned, not seen in the first one. Yeah, this is uh, absolutely uh, the base uh, for changing also clinical guidelines, I would say. Yes, it should. Because the procedure is safe and if it reduces heart failure, it's good. And, and this is a lower risk group of patients. That's why we did not show a mortality benefit in two years. If we waited longer or if they didn't cross over at two years, then maybe we would have shown a, a mortality benefit also. Uh, just for a further introduction, this paper has been accepted for publication simultaneous in circulation tomorrow morning. Fantastic. We can, we can see to read the paper uh, on circulation. And uh, thank you, thank you very much, Cyber, for your kindness uh, for uh, these insights on the two years results of a Chalumnet pivotal trial. Thank you.